Hey, it's your girl, Claudia Jordan. We are back with TGIF. We're here to spill the tea and break down the biggest headlines and the news and on social media. So sit back, relax, and get ready for all of this hot tea we have for you. What's up, Al Reynolds? What's up, Al? How you doing? Hey, what's going on, Claudia? And what's up, Funky Dineva? How are you? Child, let me tell y'all something. I just came back from uh, hosting an event at my high school, and I was so nervous getting dressed <laughs> with teenagers. I originally put on my jeans and, like, an old high school T-shirt I found. And I was like, Q, you can't wear this. You look like somebody's dad at the reunion picnic. And then one of my best friends, Quisha, said, well, Q, you are 40. And it's funny because the jeans and the shoes that I have on, I would wear out with y'all any day of the week with no problem. But for some reason, knowing that I was going to talk to these kids, it was like, you look like somebody's daddy. Take this S-H-I-T off. And I had the time of my life trying to figure out the appropriate thing to wear. But needless to say, the kids at Miami Carroll City Senior High School were very receptive of me. And uh, they didn't mess up my self-esteem. So, shouts out to Dr. <laughs> and the kids. Because, uh, you know, kids can be cruel. Kids can be, yes, they can. They kids they can, can be cruel. That's so, true. what did you speak on to these kids? What were we talking so about? I was just hosting, but they were they, they were doing a, a unique partnership with Tesla in hopes of turning the school into a magnet program that directly uh, – teaches the kids to be Tesla certified. So when they come out, they can do solar, battery, all that stuff that Tesla does. So that's what they were doing. And I was there as an alumni to help bridge community, bring more awareness to the event and, and tell the kids, you know, look at where I'm at now. And I started in this same place as you stay focused, go to school, all that good stuff. Very nice. Well, speed of technology, someone in the chat said my Wi-Fi is acting up already. So I made some phone calls. Turns out that I I have Spectrum. Spectrum is not good in my neighborhood for some reason. So I found uh, someone that has a, the fiber, opted the fibers. It's called Frontier. I have an appointment on Monday morning. We're going to rewire this whole house. So hopefully we'll have no more problems. You have to stop calling my Wi-Fi ghetto because I know it is. So I'm happy to report that I'm going to catch up with y'all and have some decent Wi-Fi here. <laughs> All right. How you doing, Al? You good? <laughs> yeah, you. Claudia, I went to Halloween on in west hollywood like you said mm -hmm. and it was insane is oh my wild? goodness it's like four lanes like the the traffic is is stopped and everyone's just walking up and down the street you see tons of costumes crazy costumes everything from the three little pigs <laughs> to you know the bridgerton actors it, it was really nice i had a very very good time and that's the reason why i'm drinking tea tonight <laughs> so you went too hard last night I went a little hard last night, yes. Okay, well, I'm good to hear. I didn't do anything. I stayed in the house and let these kids come take all the candy. Real quick, I have to say this before y'all clown me. Yes, my eyebrows are healing. I had microblading, so it's scabbing up, and I cannot touch them. So I'm just stuck. So people in the chat, I see y'all. It'll be better next week. Okay, uh, so Al, you're drinking tea. Tea. I'm drinking some pink Moscato. Q, you drinking with me? We having a drink with your girl or not? I barely made it to work on time. I keep <laughs> on my kitchen light. <laughs> okay, so I don't even have a cup. On commercial break, I'm going to go get me some Kool-Aid or something. All right, cool. Well, all right, let's get into the show. We have a lot of show, and everyone is raving still about how good last night's show was. They really enjoyed the show. It was actually a really good show. It was fun. It was fun. It was fun. And shouts out to Weezy, baby, Miss Louise. We had a lot of fun with her and our other gentleman, Jordan Giles. I really did enjoy them. I know Jordan got a lot of DMs and a lot of people loved. They were loving Weezy. So good, good job, producers. Good job in choosing those two. Justin. All right. Chloe Kardashian is getting a lot of heat this Halloween after fans accuse her of black fishing with her choice, her costume choice. Chloe shared photos of herself dressed up as the popular Bratz doll, but social media brought attention to her costumes darker skin tone do you think chloe was black fishing in her brat's costume doll let's go to you uh funky what do you think you know i don't know it's weird right because when i look at her picture production if you could put it up one more time like if she if she really wanted the black fish she could have gone bronzer right she could have gone more bronzer and maybe she was just trying to give the smooth porcelain doll appearance that's what i was thinking but on the flip side of things this family is so media and marketing savvy 
that you just don't know. Here was what I do know. I do know that Kim, Chloe, Kardashian clan are smart enough to know what black fishing is and what the potential backlash is of doing it. So if she did do it, she did it intentionally to get in the press. And if she did not do it intentionally, then I think she was just trying to give the face the bratty porcelain look. Okay. Al, what do you think? Well, we know the Kardashians are known for co op and blackness, but I didn't get that here. I, 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 I really, I, I, I feel like we're reaching. I, I didn't get it. I thought she looked tan. She, you know, had a makeup artist make her look tanner to fix the, to fit the character. I think everything was fine with it, in my opinion. Of course, they're appropriate for my culture, but not in Chloe's case. Chloe is black. Her daddy is OJ Simpson. Why are we even tripping? <laughs> she should be able to be as brown as she wants to. Like, why are y'all hating on this biracial queen? What do y'all matter? <laughs> right, Claudia. You look like that biracial is. Tamari Hardy said, y'all overusing blackface just because she's darker don't mean she black. And Jenna J said, give her a break. OJ is her daddy. That's what and, I'm saying. And it Burley next said, can you blame her? They like black people. You know, I listen. There's some people that do blackface and we know they're being offensive and they, we know they're clowning the culture and they don't really have love for us. I think we've gotten to a point where you can't do or say anything. I, I used to do all kinds of costumes for, for Halloween and I would make myself look like the person, whatever race they were. And right. people, it was fun back in the day. But then we got very woke and we stopped doing that. And honestly, I'm really not like Halloween used to be, I, I feel like it's just too, you have, you have to overthink everything and make sure you don't offend anybody. And it's to the point where it's like, I'm going to stay home. Let me ask y'all a question, right? Because to your point, Claudia, there's nothing for a black child to imitate, you know, a, a, a white historical figure for Halloween. And it's all good. Is there a world where let's just say a, a, a white person can say, Listen, guys, I'm being Gabby Douglas for this Halloween. I'm not trying to be mean, but because I want to execute the look, I'm going to paint my face with a brown makeup, but I'm not trying to be Sambo. Like, is there a world, Al, where that can happen, or is just the answer no? I think there's a world, I just don't think as a celebrity, you should probably do it. I think it's probably opening yourself up to a, a lot of scrutiny, regardless of whether it's Halloween or, you know, a, a theme party or something like that. I just think celebrities, public figures, people in the media, in the limelight, just shouldn't go there with that type of stuff. Sucks. I remember, like, back in the day, I was Sarah Palin. I was drunk fish with the sash on. I had a vodka bottle. I was as pale as her. I wasn't trying. It had nothing to do with, like, racism or her culture. I understand it's different with black or white. But I feel like <clears throat> I think blackface and putting brown makeup on, it's two different things, right? Blackface was when they was doing the whole Sambo thing, over-exaggerating our features, clowning us, making fun of, making the big nose and the lip and ooh, making the stupid expressions, making fun of us. I understand that. That is never okay, right? Mm -hmm. But when you put on makeup to look like the person you are paying homage to, is that the same thing? Catch hmm. this, Claudia. HR said black kids don't have their faces painted white. Yeah, but they mamas had that blonde wigs on and that blonde, the blonde sewings, and y'all don't want to, <laughs> y'all don't want to talk about they, they, the black kids might not paint their face white, but they <laughs> mammy got that blonde hair in. Let's talk about that blonde and miss, miss me with the black people grow blonde hair. Child, it's a small select few people, the the Melanese, Melanesian people somewhere over there in Australia. Bitch, that don't represent the vast diaspora of African not the Melanesians. Oh, black people, we is not growing <laughs> blonde hair. Y'all do anything to appropriate the white women's hair or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Child, but they ain't ready for the go on to the next thing, Claudia. They, they don't say I hate the black I'm, women. I'm, I'm I hate the black women. I just hate them blonde ass wigs y'all be wearing. I'm, I'm with you when you're right. As you say, the, the the blonde hair, the chopping the nose down, the features. Sometimes we're guilty too, y'all. Now, come on now. We gotta we gotta call we gotta call it when we see how we see it here. Okay, I'm moving on. In the premiere episode of Shrig Night's new podcast, 
he got a podcast. <laughs> um, Suge made some crazy allegations about Akon. He alleged that Akon and his associate raped two teenage girls in a hotel room. Well, Akon mm. responded to the allegations and said, the world knows a lie when they hear it. It's unfortunate that this man is going out like this. It's sad and seriously embarrassing. Regardless of our history, I'm still going to be praying for him. What do you think of Suge's accusations against Akon? Uh, according to the Suge, the teenage girls confessed the rape to his homegirl. Suge claims he told the girls to not go to the police. After y'all go, I have a Suge Knight story where he actually shared a rape story with me as well. Um, go ahead, Al. What do you think about this? Gee whiz. Like, how many rape stories he got? You know, uh -huh. I didn't like this. I didn't like this. It, it's, it's, it's an unfortunate allegation. It's messy. Um, we know that uh, Suge Knight and Akon have had beef. They've had this beef for going on 14 years. But to say you raped a 12 and a 13 year old, I, I think that's out of bounds. Luckily for Akon and his legal team, they are taking legal action and they're filing a defamation of character uh, lawsuit against Suge Knight. But I just don't understand how and where that would go, though, because Suge Knight is in prison. But I do like the idea that Akon is standing up for himself and saying, hey, I don't care if you're in prison or not. I'm not having this. First of all, why y'all shading me in the chat? Um, Jen J said, how Suge got better internet than Claudia in prison? <laughs> <laughs> do y'all got frontier? <laughs> do you <laughs> what do you think about this? Listen, it, it, you know, um, point blank period, I'm not listening to nobody whose podcast is predicated on a collection of collect calls. I'm just not doing that. Oh. Like, you know what I'm saying? You, you're not finna call me over a recorded line or, on on collect. I had to answer the collect in order for you to say whatever the hell you want to say. Is that what he does? I, yeah, that's what. That's how the call, that's how the thing is done, allegedly. And um, here's the thing. Suge is bored. You know what I'm saying? For the last couple of years, it was, oh, my health, my eyes, my diabetes, my kidney, my pancreas. Oh, I got to get out. Horrible work conditions. Okay, I guess, unlike R. Kelly, he don't figure out his ass ain't getting out no time soon. So now he's going back to the Suge Knight that we know, the bully, the mm. menace to society. And now you want to tell these grotesque things. Okay, let's just say hypothetically for kicks and giggles that it did happen. Isn't there some type of street code that street people follow, like no snitching and all this type of stuff? And granted, I'm not the most steeped in hip-hop culture. I did not know that Suge Knight and Akon had any type of beef. Akon, in my opinion, is the furthest thing from a thug out there. So I don't even know how he and Suge's past would cross. Somehow they must have. He's on Suge's radar. I don't believe it. I don't think nobody's believing it. And as much as we keep our eyes on the blogs and social media, nobody's really running with this and believing that Akon raped these girls in their room. Mm. Um, so he did say, and hopefully he said allegedly, he did say that his homegirl told him that. So it ain't like he has firsthand knowledge. He's gone by what someone told him. So we don't know about that. Any, any, anybody could do that, Claudia. Yeah, yeah I know. You know, uh, you know my, my homegirl said Al and Claudia was used to hunch behind the bleachers. Yeah, yeah, imagine. You know? <laughs> so, so yeah, he's saying what his friend is. But we do that all the time, right? I heard, I heard, right. so it's like. We can't really be that hard on him. I do agree with you. I do think he's bored, and rightfully so. But I will tell you, one time I was coming out this club, right? Suge Knight was outside, and I was one of the people in L.A. that used to be fearful because every time he would come to the bowl in L.A., everyone would run the hell up out of it and leave because they'd be nervous, right? Because there's always some shit. So anyways, but he's taken a liking to my personality on the Fox Hole with Jamie Foxx. He's like, you're funny. Anyways, long story short, he starts telling us a story as he's sharpening a screwdriver on the sidewalk, and I talked about this on The Breakfast Club about a woman that said F Sugar, I don't care about, I mean, a guy that said F Sugar, I don't care if you date Sugar. Anyways, he said his homeboys went over and raped old boy. And he was telling me this, like there is a lot of rape stories around him. I do think he knows a lot of industry secrets. I will say that. I don't know about this one being true because I don't know anything about Akon, but I do agree. I think he's bored and he's all, but also that don't mean he don't know some real tea. But I don't, you know, I don't know. Would y'all, the realty is how you get a podcast from the internet. Like I don't, I mean, from prison, like I am still kind of tripping on that. I don't know, but I'm just, I'm just stuck on the misery loves company thing. You already in prison. Like your life already ruined. Like why, why are you trying to ruin somebody else's and why right. now? <clears throat> and why now? But if he is a rapist, I do want to know, and I do want justice, but I don't, I've never heard that about him. Well, well, I mean, aren't the girls or what the girls are 20 something now that where let's see what they got to say. If they were raped, they should come forward. 
And give us some, you know, and Suge Knight people, Suge Knight people, Akon, forgive me, but since they told your friend, your cousin, or whoever she was, that means she know their name. Get the name, Suge Knight. Spray the name out on the collect calls. Like, let, let it, like, give us some more to go with so we can run with this. I agree with that. Kiki16 said, Akon and sex with a minor is not new news. We heard that over 15 years ago. Have y'all heard that before? I haven't, but they, and, and although haven't. one is statutory, the other, he's given the impression that these girls were like, rape, rape, rape. Right. That's, mm -mm. All right, well, if anyone wants to call and collect soulmates and get the tea from Shrigna, I might call and collect just so I can ask some more details. Like, I'm, Let's get to the bottom of this. All right, so coming up next, we got the latest and craziest stories coming out of Florida and later find out which major airline is facing serious charges. Stay tuned. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. You're not gonna get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff. Like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. You did Why? not just tell me about the word Riz. Riz? <laughs> oh, I man. gave y'all free Riz. McMillan and Mara. When you wanna meet a woman or meet a guy, Say something about the space yeah. and see how they respond. Every Thursday. Because if the person can't respond to an observation about the space that's clear, you talking to a dummy or someone you might take home, but not to your mama. And you know what I'm saying. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Welcome back to the show. Soulmates, show us some love in the chat. And also, uh, I want to shout out Brooke and Destiny. They are two of our other producers that work really hard on this show. And I found out they're responsible for the great bookings yesterday for our super fans. So thank you so much for the hard work that you do and put into the show. We appreciate y'all. All right. All right. Moving on. Whether good, bad, ugly, or just plain dumb, the tea is always overflowing with crazy news stories in the state of Florida. And that's why we're giving you the 411 in What the Florida? All right, y'all, a Florida man was found guilty and sentenced to life for murdering his wife after she refused to go on a home renovation TV show. 55-year-old David Trones killed his wife, Shanti Carper Trones, after spending thousands on upgrading their house, hoping to be on the reality TV show Zombie House Renovations. Listen, I know renovations are tough. I'm going through it right now, but damn, Funky, what do you have to say? about this florida story and how uh, uh, we defend uh, this one okay so look here's what i'm gonna say mm. nobody deserves to be dead and, and killed but she did deserve to be punished and i'm gonna tell you why oh, because God, during God. this renovation process <laughs> the man slept in the garage during the whole process and she slept in one bedroom during the whole process. This man spent thousands of dollars. And clearly she had to know why they were both making those sacrifices on the front end that the intentions was to get on this show. This man, do you know what it's like to sleep in a garage? 
okay, with exhaust and washing machines and spilling <laughs> a washing powder and insects getting, do you know how that bugs get in the garage? That man gave up a lot. And you know what? He didn't mean to kill it. See, that's the thing. He didn't mean it. He just wanted to choke her a little bit. First he of all, her, first Rocky. of all, <laughs> he I just wanted to choke her no, a little bit. No, first of all, you just told on yourself, on them. You said she slept in a bed and he slept in the garage. He is weird. And he chose to sleep in the garage. They have a bedroom <clears throat> that she's up in. Why don't he just cuddle up behind her? When my parents came up, they had a, a full-size bed, not even a queen. And my father's six feet tall. My mom, they was able to fit in that bed. So there's more to this funky. Mm. Go ahead. But he didn't mean to do it. <laughs> oh, he didn't well, mean to actually, kill his wife? The temporary insanity. Okay, go ahead, um, Al. What you think? I, well, first of all, they were having marital problems already. That's why he slept in the garage. That I mean, that's why she she slept in one part in like a studio. He slept in the garage, and he has spent thousands of dollars. He said he spent thousands of dollars on this renovation, and he was expect. And they were having financial issues. They were having marital issues. They were having financial issues, and this was going to help him get out of that financial hole that they had dug up, dug in, or got in because of the renovation. And when she backed out, he owed all this money. Snapped. Right. He, snapped. He, he snapped. He lost it and, and, and choked the crap out of her. Temporary <laughs> insanity. He innocent. Those shows don't be paying no money to be on those shows. But he know? didn't know that. <laughs> oh, my God. You know what? I've never even heard of that. I've never heard of that show. Have you? No, me neither. Long be and, and this happened in 2018. I wonder why did it take so long? Why did it take five years for him to get sentenced? That's what I want to know. Because and I also want to know how long were they married? Look huh? at the comments. They in the comments making excuses. Uh, Fish Eye Jedi, he was having an allergic reaction. And uh, Nisha says, Claudia Q was just talking ish. Okay. Okay. Spent thousands of dollars, but he's broke. Mm, fishy. Okay, uh, a woman in Jacksonville wants to clear her name after ring footage showed her shooting and killing a dog that was viciously attacking her Shih Tzu named Shorty. The owner of the dog that April killed said she wants to file criminal charges against April for the murder of his dog, Loki. Oh, how cute. Funky, was she wrong for trying to protect her fur baby? Absolutely not. Y'all know I'm all for shooting the shit out of people and shooting the <laughs> shit out of things, okay? Uh, and she been trying to save her shit through and she shot the shit out of that damn dog and she should have, okay? I'm a dog person. Y'all know I love dogs. There are just a certain level of responsibility that comes with being a dog owner and especially when you own a dog that is deemed an aggressive breed. Now, everybody I know that owns pit bulls, they always do this song and dance, talking about pit bulls are not a, uh, 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 pit bulls are not aggressive, talking about pit bulls are only aggressive based on the owner, talking about they pit bull would never do it. And then we talking about this pit bull ate this shit so when she shot the shit out of it and she should have. I agree. If you try to come from one of Shelly or six, you're going to die. Al? <laughs> you know, this was just, this was just, just unfortunate across the board because the owner's friend was walking his dog for him. And, you know, I, he, he lost control of the dog. And then this happened only for then there to be a death of a dog. To me, I, I do feel like owners should be responsible for their dog's actions and they should be charged accordingly. But according to the state attorneys, they said that there is no grounds in this case for any type of criminal complaint to be filed. Oh, so the real Aaron Dondo, I want to address you. The real Aaron Dondo said, psycho, she could have still got the dog off another way. Well, no. You must have never seen those videos or been in the presence of a pit bull when they lock their jaws on something. They go for the kill. And in the article, it says that the dog walker was wailing on the dog, even though even the woman that shot the dog admits the dog walker was wailing on the dog. She was hitting the dog with everything she had, and it was a last resort uh, to shoot the dog. Have y'all ever been bitten by a dog? I yes. have. I was bitten by a... Uh, a Rottweiler when I was uh, a kid, elementary school age, my neighbors across the street, we would go to knock on the door. I didn't know their dog had had puppies. And mm -hmm. so I walked in the yard like I always do. And mm -hmm. she bit my arm. Was it a pit bull, y'all? I don't remember the story being a pit bull. 
Well, I looked at that dog in the picture and I assumed. Oh, you thought it was a bull. It, 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 is, it is a, a, a bull of some breed. That's a bull of some breed. I, I got bit one time my my friend of my grandma's house and it went on my arm and it was like lock it was not getting off so I I don't know I don't think it's that easy to kind of get them off another dog right. once they make right. up their mind to kill I think it's a wrap mm. all right this next Florida story is putting you on notice funky <laughs> Florida deputies are on the hunt for the booty patrol truck that's roaming the streets of Florida. The authorities are looking for the driver of a white Chevy, Chevy Silverado impersonating a law enforcement. Now, the truck has red and blue lights and has the words <laughs> booty patrol on the side. Who would you do if the booty patrol uh, over see, you? No, y'all, y'all didn't hear about this? No. See, I'm just going to tell y'all what's going on because y'all always want to be in our business. This is something that came out of Ron DeSantis' cabinet to control and mitigate the bad and the botched BBLs that's going on down here in Florida. Oh, my God. Here they, started, they started a division. <laughs> no. They started a division to cite the girls coming down here getting the cheap BBLs, messing up the kids. What about the kids? What about the kids? Because, you know, the kids can't be seeing all this sexual imagery and be exposed to all this sexuality. So there's a whole department but what happened is um, Tallahassee computers and, and Day County computers, they must have got the same internet as you, Claudia, because the the, chorus, the memorandum didn't go through. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's what happened. You know what? I didn't, I didn't understand this story at all because he, he never pulled anybody over. All we understand is that he had a truck. He got a citation for impersonating an officer. And then he did have the illegal red, white, and blue uh, lights on the front of his car. That's illegal in the state of Florida. Uh, but I don't understand. I, if he never pulled anybody over, how did they know he was impersonating an officer? I mean, how, where did this story come from? Probably people saw his car and it was like, you know, reporting him. Because don't you get, listen, I done got so nervous and freaked out and slowed down, slammed the brakes on my car. And it turns out it's like a, when them, security patrols like that just patrol the neighborhood and you feel all stupid so maybe people report it you think maybe and then people al, al i wonder if having the red white and blue lights alone because you're not supposed to have them uh -huh. is enough to get the impersonating an officer charge i wonder hmm okay that's a good one i didn't think about that you know yeah uh butterfly said booty calls are illegal okay uh jen j said booty patrol protect and serve that ass Okay. <laughs> Bowmate's feeling spicy tonight. All right, coming up next, find out why two flight attendants are suing a major airline. And later, Larsa Pippen and Marcus Jordan spill the tea on their wedding. She wow. made it happen. Ladies, she won. Keep it locked. Damn. You did Why? not just tell me about the word Riz. Riz. <laughs> oh, I man. gave y'all free Riz. McMillan and Mara. When you want to meet a woman or meet a guy, say something about the space. Yeah. And see how they respond. Every Thursday. Because if the person can't respond to an observation about the space that's clear, you talking to a dummy. Or someone you might take home, but not to your mama. And you know what I'm saying. I think it's just vapor with flavor. It won't hurt my kid like cigarettes, right? Vaping is safer than smoking, isn't it? There's really not even that much nicotine in them, right? My kid? My kid, my kid knows it's dangerous. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping, maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Worried about your friend, but don't know how to reach out? You could say how are you or get a fake tattoo. You could ask with an app if it works for you. You could chat with them in VR. It's so good if you think you should check in. Yeah, you should. Reach out to a friend about their mental health. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. TGIF. 
Al and I battle of the cleavage. Who got the sluttiest <laughs> turn on tonight? I say Al wins. Live and interactive. Her over girl said, Claudia's showing us her white side today. Coming to work with the wet hair. No, I had to do a pest in a pool today. Serving up all the tea. Tell me how's the dating life going? It's going. Going to the next thing. <laughs> oh, the phones want to know. I'm oh, like no. Oprah and Stan, and y'all will never get my real business. So. <laughs> on Fox Soul. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, soulmates, listen, I know life is not always easy and sometimes we need a little bit of help. And also life doesn't happen bi-weekly, so why should payday? The money you earn can be in your hands today with Earnin. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. Just go ahead and download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck, then access up to $100 a day. As you work in, leave an optional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next check. Now, Funky, I, I know, you know, you now on boats and you now wearing Gucci hats. You doing all this fabulous stuff. But once upon a time, you may have needed something like earning. So if you did need earning, like what kind of stuff would you, you think you would use it for? Child, quiet as it's kept. My ass need earning today because I got some family <laughs> members that called me and had some emergencies. <laughs> And it, my my page, I mean my uh, account took a huge hit. But you know, it is these unexpected moments like this to help your cash flow come in steady. And I'm being honest, guys, I can actually use and I might get my behind on there today. When those unexpected things happen, and you just need a little something to hold you over to payday. So a real life example for me is I had to help a family member out. I don't get paid until this Thursday when Foxo put our money in our account, and I ain't got no groceries. I ain't got no food in my refrigerator. <laughs> so moments like this would be perfect time for me to use earning just to fill in the gap until I get my direct deposit on Thursday from Miss Fox. Okay. Well, make earning <laughs> part of your financial routine and join earning. And it's over three and a half million customers who says things like, when I think about earning, I think about financial stability, security. It gives me a lot of peace of mind. Now go ahead and download the earning app today. That's spelled E-E-A-R-N-I-N in the Google Play or Apple Play app store. Uh, when you download the earning app, type in T on your podcast when you sign up. It'll really help our show. That's T-E-A, T-E-A on your podcast, subject to your available earnings, daily max and pay period. Max and uh, see earning.com slash TOS for details. Earning is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust. Members FDIC. Al, I didn't get to go to you, but uh, how do you feel about earning? No, I think it's brilliant. You know, I've said this before. I mean, especially if you have like, like a mechanical issue, if you have to get new tires, because you know, that takes a hit and you know, that's unexpected. And the best part about earning that I really, really like is it keeps you fiscally responsible because you may take the money today, but as soon as you get paid, they're gonna get their money back. And that's good because otherwise it could be another bill that's just waiting that, to happen. That's right. Promotional considerations furnished by Earn In. Let's get back to some topics. I see the soulmates. They're all up in our business. Butterfly said, how much is your Fox check? <laughs> <laughs> and then Kiki16 says, Funky, use them earning, use earning for the maid. <laughs> get for one too, okay? Nikita Hunter said, y'all get paid tomorrow. Can I have $100? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. No. Anyways, check this out. Two flight attendants are suing United Airlines for denying them a charter flight with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Now, two women claim they were denied the flight because they were allegedly not the player's preference. Young, white, and thin. What? Do you think the flight attendants have a case against United? Uh, Darby and Dawn have been flight attendants for United for over 15 years. 44-year-old Darby Quezda and her co-worker Dawn Todd claimed they were removed from the flight assignment when several white flight attendants were added to the program. So they were taken off and the white ones put on Al. Help us out with this. Um, you know what? They got a little bit of a problem over there at United. They had a similar case in 2020 um, where they made a, a, a very similar allegation saying that only blondes, blue-eyed, 
very pretty girls are the ones that are allowed to be a part of this program. Now, this is a professional baseball team, um, I guess like a private plane that they use to fly to different games, right? So they, I mean, they have a, a, a certain type of woman that they want to work that flight. And unfortunately, in, in this case, they're both of these ladies are black. One's a black Mexican Jewish woman, that's Darby, and the other black female is Todd. And they just feel like that, that they were being discriminated. They're a little older, they're a little bit more voluptuous, and they, they want to, they want their chance to be on that flight. For me, I'm like, okay, I don't get it. Do they get paid more? Yes, three or times more. They get paid. Oh, okay. So they get paid three times more. So it's only it's only right that it be you know equal. Then I mean, this is sad. But United Airlines, you 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 had this issue in 2020. You're having it again in 2023. I say you you need to settle with these young ladies. United is my at the spirit, of course, my least favorite airline. Q, what are your thoughts? You know, so just a little bit of context here for this particular program, you have to like audition to be in a program, fill an application, get accepted, go through a special set of training. And both of these ladies have flown on these flights and they noticed over time that their flights were being reduced and then eventually brought off. And then one of the ladies was kicked off the program completely. Right. So here, 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 here is where it gets fishy. It's where you have to reconcile personal preference with corporate environment. Um, I think it's absolutely wrong for these players to get on a commercial airline and make this type of request, right? Mm. Because I just think that's weird. I think that if you want to handpick and cherry pick, especially based on physical aesthetic, that y'all need to charter a private plane by the damn owner or whatever the case may be. Now, then I, I look at it this way. If I own the company and we have our regular clients, we have our VIP clients that, that pay top dollar. We make a lot of money off of this client. And if this come, you, we all have had concierge service before being in this business. They ask you what you want, our riders per se. And if you have this certain client and they say, you know, we want this thing, I can understand the human desire to try to accommodate your VIPs. However, somebody at the corporate level at United should have said, you know, unfortunately, guys, this is illegal. This is against the law. And we cannot do that. You know what I'm saying? We, we can't. But you know, two things, multiple things can be true at the same time. I can understand people wanting this request. They're used to getting VIP treatment. I can understand wanting to fulfill the request, but I think it was ultimately up to United to say no. And then I can understand why they wouldn't. They wanted to keep the business. Then the guys would have went. It's just a sticky situation all the way around. I think the answer should have been no women probably didn't give a damn whether they were on that flight or not. They cared about their compensation. And if you were going to remove them from the program or decrease them from the flight, you should have found a way to incentivize them with the same finances through some other facet of the company. Janice Marshall said, I'm a Delta flight attendant and the team pays for the selection and our company has no control. But we have all flavors in our charts. We charter the NFL. You know what I will say about this? To the to the athletes or whoever made the request that the, what they wanted, shame on you. It's a goddamn flight after your game. Can you ever have a moment where it's just about the actual flight? Does it always have to be about your penis and your preference? You're probably all married or have girlfriends at home or boyfriends or whatever y'all have, right? And even in your flight, you're worried about what they look like. I just want a good flight attendant. Bring me my food, bring me my drinks. Don't talk too much and let me sleep and not touch me and, and be kind. That's it. I would never even think, ooh, I need all the flight attendants to be like, you know, 6'2", 220, abs, arms. Like, it's just <laughs> it's just too much. Of course, that would be fun. But, like, to take people off their shift because I want to have that for the two- to four-hour flight, the max flight's going to be across America is, what, five, six hours? You can't stand. You can't stomach you, you, someone that you don't want to have sexual relations with or someone that's your your fetish for a few hours that do their job and then finding out that they get three times more. So you're stopping these women from making that extra money. Like get the hell out of here. Like, I think this not to y'all, but them, I think that's just like, yo, athletes and the people speaking, they've freaking relax. They're going to get them hoes, the girls, their preference when they get to the hotel, they're going to get them at the games. Like, can they have a moment where it's not about their penis and their preference? Get out of here. Mm -hmm. 
Anyways, keep it locked because coming up next, final who Marcus Jordan has in mind for his mess, best man. He is trying it. And later, we got the tea on another celebrity engagement. Is it funky? Uh-oh. We'll be right back. <laughs> Freedom, it's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. G-I-F. Al and I battle of the cleavage. Who got the sluttiest turn on tonight? I say Al wins. Live and interactive. Her over girl said Claudia's showing us her white side today. Coming to work with the wet hair. No, I had to do a pest in a pool today. Serving up all the tea. Funky, <laughs> how's the dating life going? It's going. Going to the next thing. <laughs> the phones want to know. I'm oh, like no. Oprah and Stan, man. Y'all will never get my real business. So. <laughs> on Fox Soul. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. You always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. Welcome back to TJF. I have the hiccups because I try to eat my dinner real quick in between commercials. So if I do hiccup, I want to apologize. In you are always doing your bodily functions on our show. I know so, you ain't talking. So unprofessional. Between, them cats, oh, oh, between your, oh. your cats and your bodily functions, we ain't going to never make it to this prime time. <laughs> <laughs> Not the ninja who sneezes and blows his nose every chance he gets on the show. Yeah. <laughs> That's because I'm allergic to your BS. Okay? Oh my God. Is that why you sneezing? We're going to blame it on that? Okay. Okay. Anyways, listen, Um, real quick, I want to just go ahead and share this information. People were asking about uh, Wheezy from yesterday. They want to help her out and, and send her a blessing. She does have a cash app. It's dollar sign Breezy Lady 10. That's B-R-E-Z-Z-Y, Lady 10. I'll post it on my story. Fellas, if you want to post it. So I'm going to post it on my Instagram. I'm going to post her picture as well as her caption on my Instagram, um, her name when we get off the show in the event that nobody wrote it down and you guys don't get it. But we definitely need to give Miss Breezy. I think it'd be great from the Soulmate family. She just started back her cancer treatments today. She's going to get her things taken out that we give her a little blessing because she really did warm our hearts last night. You guys have cash app? Yes. I'm I gonna, don't. I don't have cash up, so it's funky. I might have to, like, Apple we'll Pay or something, and then you can give her something. Okay, cool. We'll Let's do it. With us doing the Lord's work here. Come on now, somebody. What? Okay. Sounds like wedding bells are getting louder for Marcus Jordan and Larsa Pippen. <laughs> the couple revealed on Pablo Torre finds out that they are making plans for the big day. Marcus said since he was the best man at his father's wedding... He'd like to continue the tradition and have his father, Michael, as his best man. Do you think Michael will be his son's <laughs> best man? This is so crazy. Oh, Marcus, you are so bold. Jesus Christ. Go ahead, keep. <laughs> um, black fathers have a tendency to be able to uh, compartmentalize things. And do this whole, I don't know what this boy doing, but he just need me to go up there for two hours. Um, black fathers have that uncanny ability to do that. So I can see, 
<laughs> Michael sitting up there side eyeing the whole thing. I don't see a world where Michael Jordan won't be at the wedding. And if you're going to be at the wedding, you might as well stand up there next to the dog on boy. It ain't gonna cost you nothing. So I do think, but but here's the here's the better question. Do I think Larsa and Michael will make it to the altar or even the courthouse to file for a marriage license? And the answer is I do not. Because he got a praying mama. Her name is Wadida Jordan. And there is one thing about a black woman. If that girl can't get through that door, she's going to get through a window. Black women, what, what Shaka said, I can cast a spell, secrets you can't tell, mix a special <laughs> group. But listen, black women got that witchcraft, whatever. When Wadida put in that atmosphere and tell them ancestors she don't want her daughter to marry that woman, it ain't going to happen. Al, if you had a rival, right? A sports, yes. like everyone knew, like, okay, you had a teammate, you bumped heads with that person, and it was widely publicized. And then your son marries or is engaged to your rival's ex wife. Is I mean, it a it, it, jab or is it a, or is it, a, I'm here <laughs> for it? What, 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 what you gonna do? I mean, this is, this is crazy. I mean, I really do believe that Michael Jordan will probably be his best man because, you know, that's his son and he's going to always love his son. But the wildest thing here, it, it's not the age different. That's not the wildest thing to me. Um, it's not that the team, you know, Michael and Scottie Pippen had issues. That's not wild to me. You want to know what the wildest thing to me is in this situation is that lady name is going to be Larsa Pippen <laughs> Jordan. <laughs> That's going to be her name. You know she's going to hyphenate that Pippen. It is going to be Larser Pippen Jordan. That blows my mind. That ain't that kind of the MVP. Yeah, of that's just like, like you got two like <laughs> legends in your name. It's just funny how you know we always talk about girls with their daddy issues and girls with esteem issues. We never shed much light on how esteem issues in men manifest. Uh, a la Black Rob and Black China, every Black Rob child, Rob mm -hmm. Kardashian and Black China, we all saw from the beginning what that was. And mm -hmm. the same thing with Larsa and Michael. Everybody with a half a pupil sees this for what it is, except for him. But he got a baddie. You know what I'm saying? He got a desirable woman, and that is enough to forsake his father forsake the history, compromise the finances, upset the mama, because he got a baddie. When he turned 40, she going to be 60. And see, here's the other thing about that. Even if Juanita sold the money up, because Juanita going to have that money sold up in Wells Fargo <laughs> like, like Wendy Williams' <laughs> money still is. If Juan, even because Juanita going to sow that money up, but Larsa still going to find a way to get in there. I bet Daddy have forgot some embryos froze somewhere. She going to convince him to um, squirt on them embryos. She going to figure out a way to get her hand in that pocketbook. You know, all this money and wealth just going out of the Black community. I wish he was marrying... I wish he would be like a power couple with the sister. And I know people are going to get mad at that comment. I really don't care. But she already had one. Let somebody else live. Oh, well, you know what? And let's do the, before we move on, let, let, let's, you know, let's not just play Larsa. Do Larsa even need money? Probably not. She probably has a pretty good. She's on that show. Like, independent of the show, as long as she was with that man, as many of them tall ass kids that she pushed out. Okay. Plus the show, I mean, I would think that Larsa is worth a couple million herself. And, and, you know, listen, I know when someone is from a wealthy family, the first thing people think it's about a bag. She very well may find him. She may, very well may be legitimately in love with him. Listen, a young man will make you feel young again. I get all of that. But the optics are just bad. And we are outside. To, to be fair, we are outsiders looking. And we don't know what their day-to-day -day is. And how okay, so look. Granted, mm -hmm. the internet don't always know us in people's bank account. But it says she's worth twenty six million for kicks and giggles. Let's just reduce it by half. That still gives her thirteen million. Larsa don't need no money, so there could be an argument made that she really do like him because she don't need no money. 
She probably likes him, and she he's younger. She's getting that she's getting that good sex. Like she's getting that back blown. You know what I'm saying? Like a young young men really like to prove to older women, I'm a man. I'm a man. I can I can. And it's very exciting to older women. Don't ask me how I know. I just because <laughs> you're young and supple. I'm older, but I'm saying the young ones do be trying to satisfy us when they get us. They be trying to do seven in a row. I'll be like, relax, relax. Okay. A mother in Georgia claims her daughter's elementary school teacher beat her student and left them with welts and bruises on their bodies. Brittany Walker said her daughter recalled her teacher lining the students up and hitting them with a laptop charger. The teacher was placed on administrative leave. What are your thoughts on the teacher only getting administrative leave for allegedly beating her students, Al? I think it's crazy. I think she should be fired and she should lose her license in all 50 states. But you know who, who I'm really upset with? I'm upset with the teacher who another teacher witnessed this. And you know what she did? I mean, it did help. She had the, the students that she saw get beat right down what happened. What in the world? I mean, what school is this? What state is this? And I think that teacher should be put on administrative leave. How can you, as a teacher, administrator, et cetera, watch kids get beat by another teacher and not step in? I, I, I just feel like both of these teachers need to go. All right. I hear you. Q? You know how you don't remember much from like your infant, toddler, preschool years, but traumatic experiences stick out to you? I remember I was in preschool and um, all I remember is the, the feeling of terror and the, 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 the voices of children screaming, this happened to me. We were all the students in the class were lined up and we got a spanking from the teacher. And I can remember as the teacher was coming down the line one by one, the amount of terror that I felt in all of the children crying. And it happened at Van Cara in Opelika. It mm -hmm. was in the plaza with the food stamp office. I'm 40 and I remember this. OK, <laughs> uh, so these things do happen, but both of them need to be fired. All that jazz said, one of the parents need to catch her in the parking lot. And beat her. Uh, yeah. And Kay, Hunt K said them badass kids needed a whooping. But you know what, parents? Don't hit them. Sue the school board and get your money. There you go. Mm. Bankrupt okay. their asses. File a class action. Bankrupt. No, don't file a class action. Get in there first. The person that get in there first get the most. <laughs> All right, coming up, find out which hot celebrity couple just got engaged. We'll see you right back. Hit that like button. We'll be back. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood. But one day, she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual. And uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn. And she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. You did what? not just tell me about the word Riz. Riz? <laughs> oh, I gave man. you all free Riz. McMillan and Mara. When you want to meet a woman or meet a guy, say something about the space yeah. and see how they respond. Every Thursday. Because if the person can't respond to an observation about the space that's clear, you talking to a dummy or someone you might take home, but not to your mama. And you know what I'm saying? This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day.
welcome back to the show. I am looking at the soulmates comments. They are talking about what kind of school the students they were. I just want to read a couple. Venetia Phillips said, a teacher hit me with a ruler for talking, taking too long at the water fountain. I threw my desk at her and got expelled. I was in the third grade. That's a badass kid. Soulmates. Y'all out of control. Okay. Hey, Zoe Kravitz and Shannon Tatum announced they are officially engaged. 34-year-old Zoe and her now fiance, 44-year-old Channing, have been dating for two years. They first met during the casting of Zoe's upcoming film, Pussy Island. What are your thoughts on Zoe and Channing's engagement, Al? Hey, it's both of them second marriage, so maybe this is a charm. Um, I think that this is definitely on brand for Zoe. It's for Zoe. And to be honest with you, you know, Chatham Tatum, he's got a little sauce and a little swag, you know, so I ain't mad at this. I think they make a beautiful couple. They're both attractive and hopefully they'll get it right this go round. All right. Q, what are your thoughts? I like it. Um, they are both two very non-problematic people. They're never in the press for anything negative. I think Zoe Kravitz is so underrated as a star, but there is something that I love about her. I love that she hasn't quite hit a list status. I love, and granted, I want her to get there, but I love that we see her in like these novelty roles or whatever. Because I love it. I love them together. Um, I think their temperaments and their energies match, and I wish them nothing but love, success, and happiness in their marriage. Very sexy couple, I will say that. Those Very kids sexy. are be beautiful. Mm -hmm. And if y'all make a sex tape, I'm not saying I won't watch it. <laughs> he is hot. She is too. Uh, okay. Someone, oh, Jalen Wilson said, someone said if they have kids, the black is coming from Channing's side. Stop. <laughs> she black. Okay, switching gears. Check out this recent tweet by Elon Musk. He wrote, the word cis is a heterosexual slur. Shame on anyone that uses it. What is your take on this tweet? Uh, get, off, get off my line with your eggnog filled chin. <laughs> um, you will not do that. I don't understand what is his aversion to shaving damn weirdo even though i was speaking at an event today for your company at my former high school <laughs> while your company is everything your technology is great and we want our kids to use your technology to become rich and famous you're the <laughs> but please continue to send tesla representatives to miami Carroll city senior high school because our impoverished children really do need it but you you're the pits and please stop <laughs> Elon stop trolling us like don't shouldn't you be building a spaceship or a sub oh, like get out of the political realm get out of the social realm get out of the LGBT realm and stop stirring people up this this is what happens when you're rich they're bored and so you try to stir up people emotionally because you you, you you've had every other experience on the planet there is to have mm -hmm. Okay, Al, what are your, what's your take? I just feel like he's mixing two different conversations. He's mixing gender identity, which is cisgender, um, with his sexual identity, which is heterosexual. I, 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 it just seems like he needs a hobby. And, and, and more than just making kids, because doesn't he have like eight kids? Eight, ten, something like he got, that. He got like some ridiculous number of kids. I mean, I, mean, I, just, I just feel like he needs a hobby or something. I mean, he, he, he's doing too much. Now, while we can have an argument whether we like or don't like the word cis, which is a fair argument, that is fine. That does not make it a slur. Relax. I feel like white people so want their own oppression. So they try so hard. Everything's, that's like the N-word. That's like our N-word. That's like, get the F out of here, Elon Musk. And Elon, you, you're very weird. And I think when you're that brilliant in one space, like in technology, in one area, you lack somewhere else. And that is in social skills and social just, you're just a weirdo. And I used to like you before you started speaking. You're like the white Amber Rose. When Amber Rose was quiet, everyone loved her. And then soon she started talking, everybody came first. I liked it when she spoke, but I'm saying the public. Elon, go back to just, drawing formulas on chalkboards and trying to dig tunnels and make these super fast trains. Cause this right here is the political, shut up weirdo. Just shut up. All right. We have a comment. Oh uh, yeah. Boogie 40 says, has he acknowledged his trans child yet? Boy, bye. 
And Candy is- Fragrance said, Mofo ain't got nothing else to do. He doesn't. He's weird. All right. Um, I want to thank my co-hosts, Al Reynolds and Funky Dineva, for joining me tonight. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Thank you. Uh, stay tuned for Fox Souls Face Off. We'll see you back here tomorrow. And y'all haven't seen Six in a long time, and he's on my lap. And because we got that spoopy there, I just want to show him. He's shaved right now. Y'all have a good one. Y'all be good. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Have an excellent night, soulmates. Which have a good night, soulmates. Bye. Bye. <laughs>